Hi, it's Wesley with 22 Zines. I'm doing a VR to the hashtag MyCozyDex. Um, I don't remember who started it. I'll put that in the links. I did not think to check before I started. Um, yeah, and the idea is just to like to pick out the coziest decks in your collection. Very straightforward, very simple. Um, the reason that I wanted to do this tag was because lately I have not been feeling especially cozy, and I think it's just because um, Taurus season is just kicking my ass a little bit, where, you know, I'm kind of... It's almost like I'm feeling forced to slow down just from my body and, like, activity and energy levels, <laughs> um, and there's a lot of things that I have in progress started from airy season that I would like to keep going. And there's a lot of new opportunities that came up as a result of what I was doing during airy season. And generally it's just, I guess I'm feeling a little bit frustrated where I have been going back and forth between a lot of different emotions of just being really irritated at like everything, no matter what. And, um, feeling just kind of, um, bitchy about everything, or I've been, like, um, overwhelmed and feeling, you know, like I want to chastise myself for signing up for so many things, like, as though I've signed up for many things, just like I've put things in motion and now I'm like, ugh, why did I do that? Why couldn't I have just done nothing or, like, stayed at the level that I had now? Um, and then feeling guilty for not keeping up with things to the level that I would like, or um, feeling just stuck and like, okay, I want to do something, but I am just like, I can't, like, I'm just exhausted and I can't do anything right now. Um, and then feeling guilty that I'm not doing enough. And I think in general, um, I'm not, I think that contextualizing this in terms of the astrological seasons uh, really has helped me, I think, in that it helps me realize that it's not, um, a personal failing to feel a certain way or to have certain needs or to have those needs change over time. It, it's not like I was finally doing good enough and now I am dropping the ball and I'm being lazy and it's any sort of like, you know, personal negative personality trait or something. I think that's something that since I started studying astrology just many years ago, that's something that has been really helpful about the whole thing is being able to understand my experiences from a slightly more um, objective lens, just like objective as in it feels not human. It feels like it's trying to explain um, the reason that we feel di different ways or like it's it's trying to explain nature and it's trying to explain the natural cycles um, that that everybody goes through and how it affects you personally. And what I like about that is that it it doesn't excuse certain things or endorse certain things. It just is. <laughs> and I think being able to see things happening and being able to see feelings and being able to see myself in a way that is not immediately um, passing some sort of moral or societal, you know, judgment level has been really helpful where, you know, I think I would often get into the habit of declaring something that I'm doing as good or bad, or declaring myself as good or bad. And, you know, it's not even necessarily that it, I was, I was constantly telling myself that I wasn't good enough. It's that I was only good enough once I was doing certain things. And so it's almost like a big, it's like a spike. It's like a heart attack where it's like up, down, up, down. Um, and I think that's why those, that's why like affirmations that are saying things like you are good enough, um, doesn't 
those never really worked for me. Like, I didn't really feel it because I think it's, like, it would only hit, like, half the time where it's, like, you know, well, yeah, I know I'm good enough when I'm doing this and that, and I can do this and that, and so therefore when I'm not doing this or that, I'm not living up to my fullest potential or something. Anyway, I kind of got off on a, t on a tangent there. Um, Taurus season. So, I think that, of course, naturally, I'm starting to do this at literally, like, the end of Taurus season, you know, the last, the last Deccan. I'm not doing a Deccan walk or anything like that, but, you know, <laughs> we're reaching, like, the third week of Taurus or something, and now I'm, of, of course, only now am I starting to look at this, but I feel like, okay, maybe the solution... Or, or, you know, what, what I, it feels weird to say solution to a feeling, you know, but I think that what I'm going to do <laughs> and what I think that I would make me feel better <laughs> is to, um, sort of lean into the more, uh, uh, tender day-to-day -day experiential kind of things that Taurus talks about and, um just trust that Gemini is coming soon and that all of the communication and sort of, um, um, ideas and upkeep and speediness that I, uh, like <laughs> and that I, f I feel most at home in, maybe because I'm Libra, I've got a lot of air sign stuff in me, you know, that's, that's when I tend to feel most of myself. Just sort of trust that that's happening and in the meantime just enjoy the, um, the pause, I guess, and enjoy the more physical aspects of Taurus. I have been, like, I've had sort of a, I guess you would call it like a, I don't know, a spell. <laughs> I'm, I'm still, like, on the fence about whether I want to use that word for, um, describing some things that I'm doing, but, like, I've got this, I've got some, um, tarot and oracle cards that have been sitting out, and I don't usually set them out for a really long time and look at them and actually sort of feel like, yeah, okay, that's right. I think half the time when I have a tarot card just sitting out, it's because I'm just too lazy to put it back. <laughs> Where I just, like, put it up on my desk and it's like, yeah, whatever, I don't want to dig out the box. But this time, for whatever reason, like, I had done a reading and I had pulled out these cards and they just really, like, stuck well together. And they they all kind of spoke to the same thing, um, which I didn't really expect. And it was really about um, pause and, like, letting things brew under the surface um, and just kind of... No, <laughs> knowing that waiting is not doing nothing. Like, things are still happening under the surface, and just to kind of, like, wait for the right time um, and trust that the right time is coming. And so, anyway, like, I just kind of have left those out, and then a couple times I thought, oh, do I want to put those back in? I was just thinking, like, no, these need to be up there right now. Like, I will know when they've done their job and they haven't done their job yet. <laughs> I, of course, like, why is it that I'm, like, contextualizing things in terms of work? I'm saying, like, oh, well, when these tarot cards do their, their job, their work, then they'll be done. I don't mean it like that. I mean, when they want to go back, when they're like, okay, yeah, you know, <laughs> ready to go back in, which is kind of interesting. Like, I've really never had that, I've never thought of that before. I've never had that happen. Um, I went off on another tangent again. <laughs> That's okay. So, um, my cozy deck. So we'll just, we'll just keep, we'll just, we'll just go. Um, the thought that I've had of like, what, what coziness means to me in general is like a sense of familiarity and safety that, that comes from that. Um, and a sort of, a sort of softness, um, 
kindness and comfort and, and like any place where you feel like you're, or any time when you feel like you can set down your, you know, weapons, set down your sword, take off your armor and just kind of be in like this, this place in this nest or in this open space. Like, I think it's less for me about any particular, um, type of thing because what feels cozy is going to change in different situations, I think. Like, um, if I'm feeling really, um, enclosed or overwhelmed, then the sort of things that are like little nice cozy nooks, which I usually like, it's like, that's just not going to work if I'm already feeling tense and, and tightened up. Um, I want something that's more like a big open field with a bunch of dandelions in it. <laughs> so, come here, Milo. Got my dog here. <laughs> He's gonna hang out on the couch right next to me. <laughs> I'm in kind of a new place just because I wanted to try something different. Um, this is my living room <laughs> and my spider plant. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, so it's really just, um, it's not anything in particular. It's just sort of a general feeling when I'm there. So, I'm going to do these in no particular order. Um, the first one that I have is Dame Darcy's Mermaid Tarot. I got this one sort of relatively recently because I was such a fan of the witchy cat that I was thinking, well, you know, do I really, I don't really need the Mermaid Tarot because the subject matter doesn't, like, I didn't think that the subject matter totally spoke to me where it's, you know, mermaids are not a particularly special thing in my heart. Um, but I just, and, and I was worried that it would like compete with the, um, witchy cat, but I just kind of, you know, ended up, ended up getting it anyway. <laughs> and I'm very glad that I did. Um, because it reminds me a lot of my dad in this very like old sailor kind of thing. Um, and I think that's part of what makes it cozy for me is that, um, it just, um, it reminds me of him and some of the things that he liked, but in, in sort of a romantic, dreamy, idealized way, I think that the color tone where everything looks like you're looking through a, you know, tinted porthole in a submarine or something, or like a, uh, it looks like you're looking through a, a, an old fish tank, <laughs> like, that sort of feels cozy, and, um, yeah, like, I, I, I wouldn't say that coziness is entirely about, um, uh, everything being super happy and cheerful. It's just something feeling, um, familiar and, and, comfortable. Um, like here, this one in particular is the one that I wanted to show. For some reason, this, this one just feels very cozy. And I think it just is, it's dreamy and it's dreamy in the way that my dad likes things. And, um, and I sort of thought that that would, that's like another reason is that because the sort of sailor mermaid you know, thing was associated with my dad as I was worried that this would just make me sad and that it would just make me miss him too much. But, it, you know, I think it didn't. It just ended up making me feel closer to him and I'm very happy about that. So this is definitely like a little, little comfy cozy deck for me. If I can manage to get it back in the box. Mermaid Tarot. Next, and this is just in no particular order, I have the Wild Whiskers um, Animal Oracle. And it's this really cute illustration that's, I think, in... Oh, I, I totally can't remember. I think it's, like, inspired by Russian folklore and folktales or Eastern European. I can't totally remember where the creator... Um, 
where the heritage is from. But I think what's cozy about this is it feels very kid friendly, um, but not um, in a uh, okay, okay, not in like a diminutive sense. I don't know if that makes any sense, but like it's it's kid friendly in that the meanings, the messages, the illustrations, they feel like, um, they feel cute and stylized in a way that you might expect from a picture book, but I think that it's not, um, sometimes children's media to me can feel a little bit, uh, just, uh, like, it's not really treating the, the kids as, as well as they as well as it could where it's it's a little bit like assuming that kids can't understand certain things and um I never like that <laughs> so this this feels not like that at all this feels like something that a kid would discover on their own and it would be perfectly you know understandable that a kid would discover it on their own and end up liking it but it's not like dismissive. It feels, this is maybe a weird comparison to make, but you know the Dragonology books, like Dragonology, Wizardology, the, 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 the ology books that are like these big, big books that have a whole bunch of different illustrations and, um, you know, pop-up flaps and all these things that are like on the different, on the different topic. It, it sort of reminds me of that just in terms of tone and that's very cozy. Just in, It feels like the sort of thing where you could just sort of spread out on a rug and flip through some of these things. You know, look at the cute animals, sort of whether or not you're going to try and get a reading from it. You know, reading with a capital R where you're, you're trying to like get something you know, you know, get a bunch of deep spiritual answers or whatever. Not that this can't provide that, but you know what I mean. It's just, it feels casual and friendly and yet, and sort of serious, but not too serious. Like, I just really, yeah, I think that this is, this is cozy in that way. And then of course the subject matter of just like these animals and these flowers, it's like, yeah, that's just sort of cozy as it is. Um, yeah. I think that cat, I think that describes it pretty well. It's just feeling like I could just like spread out on the floor and, um, and hang out with these cards in a really comfortable, comfortable way. That's the, uh, Wild Whiskers Animal Oracle. Um, next up, I guess we'll do this one sort of also... It, it feels kind of similar, I guess, in like the the child friendly but not child dismissive <laughs> kind of way is the Shadowlands Tarot. Um, this one is very in a very large box, so it's gonna take me a second to <laughs> get it out of here. I gotta make a little box for it because the large box is preventing me from using it very much. Um, yeah, so let me actually just get like half of these <laughs> there. <laughs> Easier to flip through. Um, yeah, so I'd say that this, this deck, it's cozy in, in that it's sort of, it's, it's creepy in a cute way. It's creepy in a kid friendly way. And it's creepy in the way that like, sometimes little kids they ha <clears throat> they have sort of a different definition of creepy. Like, they don't really consider certain things to be creepy that adults do. And I don't know why that is. Like, and not all kids are like this, but it, it's sort of, you know, they, I think that kids are very good at finding the um, friendliness and the cuteness in, in everything. <laughs> like, um, all that this kind of reminds me of is that um my go-to Halloween costume is werewolf and I had this werewolf um mask that I had made like basically just like a big furry head and it had a big growl and angry eyes and whatever um and so when I would be sitting out on the porch 
uh, while kids are coming up trick-or-treating, then some kids would be really afraid and a lot of little kids would be a little afraid. But then there were like a bunch of kids who would come up and they would, they were like, oh, it's so cute. And they would come up and they would like pet my nose and they would, they would be really excited about it. And they would sort of treat this scary looking werewolf face just like a dog. And I think that approach of, of not really finding the world, not really finding things in it to be scary or creepy in the same way that adults do. Um, I wonder if that's because they kind of don't think that they're supposed to find things creepy, if that makes any sense. Where, like, adults, whether or not they were actually frightened by the werewolf mask, um, they sort of knew, okay, big teeth, angry eyes, like, that means that this is an intimidating thing, like, so I should be intimidated by it, or, like, they've, they've almost, like, trained themselves to be intimidating, to intimidated by certain things, um, and kids maybe just don't have that experience yet, and so when they see it, they sort of classify that as, like, oh, dog, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, not that they literally think it's a dog, but it's just they put it in the same category, um, and this one, it like, <laughs> I really love this temperance card with the, this bat with the red boots on it. <laughs> it's just so, so funny and cute. So I think that this deck kind of is, is like that, where it's cozy in that it's like, it's comfy and it's cute and it's just like, uh, you know, cozy, comfy little little deck <laughs> in in a child friendly but um you know it's like scary stories you tell in the dark kind of thing i feel like <laughs> i feel like i should have better things to say but i know that's just you know, weird brain talking right now. Because ultimately, I think that a lot of these decks speak for themselves, so... Don't, you know, not everything needs to be explained perfectly. Alright. And, um... Let me take it. That calls for a sip of tea. Ah. Bingo. Okay, next up, the Bad Girl Tarot. Surprising no one, because I'm always looking for excuses to talk about this deck. Um, that's not exactly true, I just think it fits so many things. Um, okay, this one's really slippery, so I'm definitely going to have to pull just fewer. This one is cozy because there's not too much going on. And that definitely helps with the, you know, whenever I'm feeling a sense of overwhelm or even just not knowing what to do, like not really knowing what deck I want to pull, not knowing what I want to think about, not knowing if I even want to pull tarot, just kind of like existing and just being like, you know, I want to pull tarot, but just not really having any particular thought. I think that this is really good for that, and it helps just create, or, or it helps facilitate this comfortable environment that doesn't put on a lot of pressures, it doesn't put on a lot of new um, expectations or, or whatever. The images are, like, relatively simple. They don't have too many things going on. And all of the figures in it just seem really chill, <laughs> really comfortable, really chill, really um, relaxed. Even the ones in like the cards less relaxed than the sun, they just um, kind of have their shit together. And they're the sort of person that you can just hang out with. And I think that's very cozy and comforting is knowing that you don't have to be a certain way around another person 
and also that they know that they don't have to be a certain way around you. It's like this mutual thing. So, I guess you'd call, what would you call these, like, what would you call that, like, self-actualization? I don't know, but the, yeah, I think it's just, it's very relaxed, it's, um, friendly, but in a, in a cool way, <laughs> and it's not too much, it's not too overwhelming. Uh, Katie Skelly, the, the creator, has these, uh, comics, like, Katie is primarily a comics artist, and, uh, the, reading the comics is like that, too, where even though the topics are sort of intense, there's one about maids that murder the, the house owners, and <laughs> it's like, it manages to do that in, like, a cozy way. <laughs> it's not, like, a horror thing. Um... Just, like, everything has this flow and this ease and this comfort and this, like, yeah, this coziness <laughs> about it. So Bad Girl Tarot totally fits with that. I believe that the name of that comic is just The Maids. Um, definitely look it up. Check your library, because my library actually had some copies, and I did not expect it, because I was thinking of Katie as, like, oh, an indie artist that wouldn't have anything. But no, they had a library, so check your library. Always check your library. <laughs> Alrighty, let's see. Um, next up, the Edward Gorey uh, Fantod pack. And this is basically, it's described as like Edward Gorey's response to a tarot deck. And it's a very little, uh, little deck. It's like 20, not even 20 cards. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and it's like this just little, it's this little deck of these little characters um, in true Edward Gorey style or objects. And it's sort of like an oracle deck. Um, and all of the um, official meanings that are, that are associated with this in the little book are very random and nonsensical. So, like, this says the insects, the, the insects card is associated with Thursday, um, folie à deux, green sickness, senseless talk, loss of vitality, an accident in a field, false hopes, spasms, a refusal, insincere love, blisters, disagreeable news, and threats. It's like, yeah, none of those have anything to do with insects, really, and none of those words have much to do with each other. Um... So it's just, it's fun, it's it's nonsense, and um, I think that's kind of why it feels cozy, is that, again, it's like, you don't have to think too hard, it's got, like, the creepy but but familiar, it, it, creep, creep, co creepy cozy, um, it's not, maybe, maybe that's what I need, maybe I need, like, a, we need a new word that's not, like, creepy cute, because they've got, we've got creepy cute things, but this is, like, slightly different, because it's not cute, necessarily. It's, like, creepy cozy. <laughs> so, yeah. I think also just knowing that the whole thing is kind of nonsensical, um, it's not... It's not a, you know, it's an oracle. It's not a tarot deck. It doesn't have particular assigned meanings, really. It's just kind of like looking through a picture book or looking at little weird things. If I had the Mildred Payne uh, pocket oracle, I think that's what it, what's called, the uh, Patrick Valenza one, I think that would also fit in this category of, like, creepy cozy. <laughs> um, and I think it's just because everything feels very small and and friendly, and even if not friendly, it's like, it doesn't feel like a giant threat. Like, it, it feels... it feels small. And, and, like, easy to understand. I don't know, like, like, my favorite Edward Gorey story is The Unexpected Guest, and it's just, like, this cute little penguin-looking bird who doesn't talk and who just goes around this Victorian house and messes things up. And it's, it's, it's like that. Um, oh, and then... <laughs> The Ancestor, this is a self-portrait <laughs> of Edward Gorey. 
Um, yeah. Like, it just... Oh, by the way, the insects. This is the insects that I was just talking about. Yeah, it's like... It's just cute. And it's... And it's... Yeah. Cute and cozy. <laughs> so that's the... Um, that's the Fantod pack. And it's like just in this cute little box. And it's a cute little deck to just like pull things out on an on an October day or a you know, May day or any any day that you like. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. Next I've got the Northern Animal Tarot. And honestly, I feel like I've kind of forgotten about this tarot deck recently, where it used to be one of my absolute go-tos, and um, I think that I just, you know, had a good time with it, and now it's it's been on, it's been resting, and that's fine. Uh, like, you can actually see that I've got grass stains on the side. I don't know if you can tell, but these are like green stains from grass stains, because I was reading outside at this festival and I, I somehow managed to get a bunch of pollen and grass and stuff on my fingers even though I tried I kept I kept using hand sanitizer I kept like washing it off but I think that that's that's so appropriate for this deck I can't even describe it um yeah I think that what makes this deck cozy to me is that it is a just very I like the cartoon style. It feels like the sort of thing that I would draw, um, especially when I was just a little bit younger. Like this, this looks like the sort of stuff that I would draw in middle and high school. Um, I really just, I think that the, the, tones, you know, where the only bright white really is in the, uh, the titles, and, like, occasionally there's a bright white, but really it's, it's kind of muted, and, it, you know, it's storybook-like, um, everyone's got these clothing that's, like, it's not modern, it, it's not fantasy, it's kind of, like, it's, like, Lord of the Rings fantasy, where it's very practical and not extravagant, um, feels very grounded, very, um, down-to-earth, familiar, and I think all of that just sort of adds up to this comfortable, cozy feeling. I mean, just look at this page of pentacles. Like, that is the, that is the, that is, like, the coziest little spot. You got this little rabbit dude who's just hanging out with with these books under a tree, like, um, yeah, I think, I think it feels very accessible and friendly and comforting and familiar, and that's what makes it seem cozy. Yeah. Even the, oh, I, I also love how the knights are not actually riding something, but they're in a, a position or a pose as though they're riding something. <laughs> so they, they're sort of like this element of feeling like they're playing pretend that I really like. Um, they've got like the, the little mask and the, you know, they're sort of like pretending to gallop. And I just, I think that the, even, and here, here's the Knight of Cups incidentally, like right next to it. Again, we're maybe not going as fast as the Knight of Wands, but they're kind of, you know, lifting up their knee in a way that's like, yeah, you kind of look like you're you're trotting. <laughs> so I, I think that that adds to it as well. Um, and then here, even in the moon, they just look like they're they're telling stories to each other, and that feels everybody feels very comfortable with each other and. Yeah, I like that very much. So, Northern Animal Tarot, definitely very cozy. Um, let's see. Next up, I've got the Heartspun Tarot, which is a cute little deck. It's like a bridge size 
Um, and it's basically like an RWS clone, but with animals. Um, and it's just... I think that, honestly, half the reason that this deck feels cozy to me is because of the size. I think that it being just, like, a little bit smaller than than usual is so cute and friendly and just automatically makes it feel like a just, like, little, little thing that you can hang out with, nestle up with. Um, and then the animals are just... They're very well done. They look a lot like regular animals like they're doing regular animal things or even they're sort of like put next to these props but in general like they just kind of they're just kind of doing their thing of course it's like a couple without you know the bird is flying birds fly it's very comfortable in doing that you know the elephant is sort of like holding a cup but yeah elephants grasp things in their trunks and it's just, you know, these these little mice, they're just kind of, they're, they're being there. They're sniffing around. And I think that feels very familiar and that feels very comfortable and like, uh, you know, wolf with a stick in its mouth. Um, and then, of course, just like the tone, it's all very, um, it's pastel in the sense that it's like, it's it's watercolor. And so it's like, it's not insanely bright and saturated because it's watercolor. Um, and that's really nice. It's just like, it's again, it's very simple. There's not too much on each card. Yeah, I get, it's so funny. Like every time that I film this sort of thing, I end up finding things in common with the with the decks that I didn't really think about, where you think, yeah, okay, so these are all cozy decks, and so they're going to have some things in common because I'm putting them in the same category, but I didn't realize, like, these sort of aesthetic things that they have in common, like many of them just being very um, simple, rather empty, sort of big sky kind of, <laughs> kind of cards without too much detail, um, which is always kind of cool to do these little um, VRs because you notice different things about your decks and you notice different connections which is fun so that is the uh heart spun tarot very cute very friendly little deck and definitely like i feel like i could just kind of take that out into a field and <laughs> and lay around in the in the dandelions and just play with some cards all right now this next one this is the Weird Sisters Oracle, and I got this not exactly on impulse, but like whatever is adjacent to impulse, because I saw it and I sort of talked myself out of it thinking, like I was thinking, oh, I could impulse it, and it's like, I don't want to make a $50 impulse purchase. That's just, you know, no thank you. That's not a good, not what I want to do. <laughs> not a good idea right now. Um, and I just told myself, okay, well, if I keep thinking about it, and if I still really want it later, then I'll go and get it. And the thing is, like, I did still think about it, but I think every time I thought about it, it was, like, the same feeling. It wasn't, like, the whole absence makes the heart grow fonder thing of, like, expecting that I would just, at some point, yeah, say, like, yeah, I definitely need this. It was never like that. It was more just, like... You know, I just kept thinking about it, and I kept thinking, like, you know, do I want to go back and get this? Do I want... And it was, at, like, a, a physical, um, you know, they had it for sale in at a, at a physical store. Like, I could just go and get a copy any time. And at some point, I just, you know, was kind of wandering around. Like, I go the, to that place a lot because they have zines. Um, so I was getting a couple zines, and I was... And I just, like, looked at this again, and I was just like... You know, like, yeah, okay, I want to get this. So it wasn't exactly an impulse, because it's not like the first time I saw it, and it was sort of wrapped up in that, like, oh, I must have it kind of impulse, but it was more like, you know, it was impulse in the sense that, yeah, I probably could have lived without this, I probably still could live without this, and it wouldn't, you know, I wasn't, like, constantly thinking about it, but for whatever reason, I was just like, you know what, I want to get this. <laughs> and uh, one of these cards is the one that's on my uh, 
my my desk right now doing doing its thing. <laughs> um, so you know, I don't regret it by any means. I just think it's kind of it's kind of interesting. So the deck is basically it's like a spell card kind of deck where it gives you inspiration for doing a witchcraft thing. Like you pull you pull out a card and it's like, okay, so this one is candle for hope. So do like a candle spell or light a candle with the intention of doing a, a spell about hope for the future or hope for whatever. And there's like a little a little book in here that describes more about why you might need that thing, different things that you could include in the spell and whatever. And so that's why I was not super jumping on it because I don't do a lot of spellcraft or any spellcraft really. Um, but I just kind of, I thought it was interesting. I really liked the, okay, I liked the artwork. I don't, it's not my usual artwork, but it was interesting. It was enjoyable. I like the hand-drawn quality of it. Um, again, we can point out how it's very simple. There's a lot of white space in it, so it's not very overwhelming. Um, and the uh, colors are just very simple and and plain. Like, there's a lot of primary colors in this deck. Um, it's got these little, like, swirly ink things on each card that I think is really interesting. Um, yeah. So why do I call this a cozy deck? I don't know. I guess you could probably take a lot of things that I would said about the last decks and say that it's about this too, where it's like, it's a very simple thing, it's not too overwhelming, um, it's sort of designed to pull like one card at a time, or just very few cards at a time, so you can kind of really focus on it. Um, and it's just, it just feels very relaxed and at home. I mean, you can even kind of show it's like this figure of, which is for spell for personal power. It's just like this dude hanging out in polka dot pajamas, you know? It's not like, you know, the big warrior personal power kind of thing. It's just, it's very chill. Um, it's got this cute little pastel, um, uh, card back with the silvery rainbow gilding. It's got the silvery rainbow gilding on the edges. So yeah, I guess, what would you call this? Like, um, it feels very periwinkle. <laughs> That doesn't make any sense, but, like, whatever you would say that the back makes you feel, that's probably what the front makes you feel, too. It feel it's, like, relaxed, it's simple, it's... it's cozy. I'm just completely losing my words now. So that is the Weird Sisters Oracle. And the last one that I have is definitely one that is sort of like, it's cozy cute, and it's it's very friendly and adorable, and that is the Animal and Food Tarot by um, Maruko Studios, who's a, a single artist, just the name of the project is Maruko Studios. And this one is <laughs> cozy just because it is so cute and friendly and, um, and just sweet. <laughs> there's a lot of sweets in the deck because it's animals and food and there's, there's just like a lot of desserts and things, but it feels, it's so spring and summery, like early summer, late spring. Um, it's so, you know, like hanging out at a little cafe. That's what this deck is feels like, and that's something that I like to do a lot, and that's some place where I tend to feel very cozy, is at a cafe. Um, just kind of being there, and you know why I feel that way is because for me, when I'm hanging out in a cafe, time kind of stands still a little bit. 
but it or like time sort of loses its importance i i guess i'll put it that way where i can do whatever i want at whatever pace that i want and i'm not constantly checking the clock in the way that i am in a lot of other places um I have everything that I need in the sense it's like, I have food adjacent, I have a bathroom adjacent, I have comfy chair, I have Wi-Fi, but I don't have to, I don't have too many other things that are, you know, potentially distracting where it's like, I only have, at the cafe, I only have what I've brought with me. So, you know, I can't suddenly say, oh, well, you know, I probably should be doing this or that. It's like, well, you know, Sometimes I bring work with me and sometimes I don't. Just whatever I have with me, like if I have my laptop, I can do a few things like that. If I have some zines, then I'll just read some zines and I can write some things. If I have a tarot deck, I can do some cards. But it's not like when I'm at home, I have my laptop and some zines and tarot cards and a bunch of dishes that need to be done. And I should probably take the dog out for a walk and all these other things. It's like, it's it's an abundant place, but it's also a limited place in terms of its the scope of like possibilities and I really like that I think that feels very cozy feels very comforting um and I think that this this captures both it captures the abundance as well as sort of the focus and it's just I mean Oh, this one is so sad. It's so cute. The Nine of Swords where this dog is making all this bread and he's just so over with like so many baguettes I have to make. Oh no. <laughs> oh man. Yep, so I think this is a good one to end on. It's very it's very cute. It's very cozy and and the meaning totally comes through. Like it is really expertly done. I am so I'm Okay, I'm not surprised that this one isn't more uh, widespread because you do have to... It's a little bit awkward for English speakers to order because uh, you have to order it from a website uh, that... It's it's basically like a, you know, a, a store envy big cartel. Like, what you know, it's a website that the uh, creator has a page on and it's not in English, um, but it worked totally fine for me. It came very quickly, so I highly recommend that you give it a try. And the guidebook is in English. Uh, the guidebook does not have an explanation for every single card. It has one for all the majors and then a select few of the minors, but you don't need the guidebook anyway. Um, I don't know why I've ended by just saying, like, try to pitch this, but if you're, if you're watching this and you're, like, looking for a deck that feels cozy and that's the reason you're watching this, then I highly recommend this one. It is so sweet, so cute, and it reads great for other people, and it just makes everybody smile, and that is very cozy. All right. Well, you know what? I actually feel pretty good. I feel better. I feel, like, I feel calmer. Um... And that's sort of what I wanted out of this, uh, <laughs> out of this, out of doing this video, out of doing this tag. So thank you very much for joining me. And, um, you know, I'll be a little bit more active and sparkly when Gemini season hits. <laughs> so yeah, I will talk to you later. Bye.